All right, guys, let's do it. So as I mentioned, we're going to be starting a class debate. There's two arguments. The first team, this is what you're going to argue, team one. Satan was created by God as a good angelic being who served in his presence, yet his heart became proud and he was cast out of heaven. This fallen angelic being is now referred to as the devil. God did not create him evil, but good. All right? That's the first one. So, whether you believe that or not, is not really the point. You, I, I, you know, you can, but you're going to do your best to study and to present this idea because you need to know not only what you believe, but what others believe. Um, and in the process, I think it'll strengthen whatever it is that you believe. Team number two, uh, God created the devil to be evil. If all things that are in existence were created by God, then evil also originated with God and created the devil to be who he is. The main verse is, I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, and I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Isaiah 45, 7. Questions? Are they pro or are they con? On these? So it's, it's two ideas. It's debating the origin of Satan, where he came from, and there's two points of views. Um, That's so why, which one's a pro and which one's a con? Yeah. There is no pro. There is no pro. Just two con. different ideas. Yeah. There's just two different. There's so. got to be. That's the whole point of a debate. Yeah. No, you don't. You don't need a pro con. There's. There's just. If there's different. It's just two different ideas, not pro con. So the eye of the it, it's. It's. You can't really have a pro or con in this because there's a lot of debate on the subject. So you're just presenting two different ideas to try and convince the judges that you're right and they're wrong. So it's a little different than your normal debate where you're just debating one subject, there's a pro and there's a con for it. So they're, they're going to show both sides and then state the side that they're on? Exactly. Who's a judge? Yeah. Exactly. So I'll be a judge. Elmer will be a judge. Elmer will be a judge. Um, I'll try to get Jerson in as a judge. And we're gonna have it's gonna be all legit. The judges can't comment. No, no, no. Yeah. At all. No, no, no. We're just we're judging. We're just gonna judge. And we'll go over more about the structure and everything. I'm I am gonna talk a little bit about that, but um, it's a, today's the first one. We got three and every every class we're gonna get bored more. Um, okay, so here's a little bit of the structure. We have our introduction, so this is what you guys will do. First, each team is going to present their thesis. Like one team will say, we believe God created the devil to be evil. And the other team will present their thesis and say, well, we believe God created him as an angel and he turned. Um, and then you give your, uh, you just present your idea. Um, and then you go into your body, then you start giving your reasons for why you believe this. And then after that, you can use the time to debate some of their topics that they brought up and your own as well. Uh, and then we just have our conclusions. So it's a, the format's pretty simple. And as I said, as we go, we'll get this a little more today, just an overview, we'll get a little more detailed. But that's what it's going to look like. Um, you know, two sides go at a time, back and forth, back and forth. Structure, we're not going to be fighting and throwing things. Um, we're going to do this while we love each other. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see Josh get a little angry because, he, you know, he tends to. So, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, was that supposed to be in there? Yes, uh, I messed up. Yep, I messed up with that. But yeah, so first person goes, second person goes, uh, third person, you know, so we can switch off with people. Somebody does the intro, somebody does a point, another person does one point, another does one point, and then you guys all get together and rebuttal. And it's all on time. We give you like five minutes for each section or ten minutes on certain sections. And then once time's up, you're done. So we'll, we'll do it really structured. Uh, I'm still, I'm still, I'm not, what's the word? I'm no expert on this whole structure. So I'm still learning it. I think I've got the basic idea down. But as we go, I'm going to send you guys a, a video this week of a actual debate that I watched. 
which is really good. It's a little long, but you can get an idea for what it is. Uh, as I said, the team's May 5th is the date. Abigail and Josiah won't be here, but oh, everybody yeah. else... How am I not be here either? Okay, we'll probably change the date, so, because uh, we have a lot of people not going to be here. So we could do it the week after. I'm not going to be here. I won't be here that week. Okay, it looks like we're going to do it in two weeks. No. That's all we got. No, <laughs> That's all we got. Kimberly won't be here. No, Julia won't will. be here. No, I will. Julia won't. Oh, okay. So this is okay. three. Two weeks is fine. I won't be here. We should try to do what? I got a wedding. May 5th? Oh, no, May 5th. No, I'll be here May 5th. <coughs> when will you not be here? Uh, two weeks. Hmm. Yeah, we okay. Not mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> yeah that's, that's tough. All right, well, we'll see how ready you guys feel. Just start studying. We'll see how you feel. Start right now. Sorry, it shouldn't be that difficult. I was studying on this all week, and it's still I'm still a little messed up because it's hard. It's a tough topic. Okay, uh, those are the teams. Uh, so, so far, uh, Josh and Steve, as uh, Josh and Javier are going to replace Josiah and Abigail. We may need a replacement for Julia if she's out. All right, so here's the topic. A skeleton in God's closet. Okay, anybody, uh, um, I'm trying to think of that story. Uh, I don't know if I should get too personal with that, though. Anyways, um, it was funny. When we were growing up, uh, I think it was, I don't remember which kid it was, but it was kind of funny that um, maybe David, David or Abigail, uh, growing up, my mom got pregnant, and there was like this hoax going around that somebody else got her pregnant because the baby that came out was like really light-skinned. Uh, I don't remember who it was. I think it was Abigail or somebody, like somebody else was a dad. Because, you know, you have blue eyes, white skin. I'm like, man, that ain't my dad, you know. Uh, and it was, uh, you know, it was kind of like a, an awkward situation. I never really encountered it, but I know my mom was telling me that that was floating around. It was weird. Um, obviously, it wasn't true. But uh, just to, you know, to think... What if that happened? Um, would have been really strange. And then other things you think about, like some pastors, where there's uh, these big pastors, or even small pastors at churches you see, and uh, they're doing great, and then later on in life you find out this whole time they were actually molesting little kids, or you know, cheating, or they were stealing money from the church. You know, you found out later, way later. That's kind of how some people view God. Some people view God because of some of these issues, like God has a stepkid, the Satan, and which he hates, but he loves Jesus. You know, that kind of idea. Some people have the view of that, and it's, it's messed up, some people's view of God. Where it, how could God you know, do that? Skeletons in his closet. There's some other things we're going to debate later. Hell, um, and uh, why is there suffering and evil, stuff like that. Where these are the things people feel like, oh yeah, God is this awesome person. But at the same time, there's all these big issues, and what, how do we deal with them? Um, and we're going to start talking about it. And it's, so it's an important topic. Maybe you think, ah, oh, whatever, I already know the answer. It's, it's an important topic because... A lot of people use it to attack God's character and His goodness. Uh, that we, if you could say God actually is a little bit evil, that can that's a huge attack because God's supposed to be perfect. Um, if God created an evil being, then what does that say about God? You ever thought about that? If God created somebody evil. What does that say? Think about it. All right, because that's what we're going to be debating. I'm not telling you what I believe right now. But if angels rebuild against God, then evil might exist in heaven. Is that weird? Sound fine? I don't know. Some things to think about. So many today use this as an attack on God's character because they think, well, maybe he's shady. Maybe we don't can't trust this guy. 
Um, if you hey, if you have questions, take some notes because you're going to be debating, and I'm just throwing some. I'm going to throw you some nuggets while I'm going, uh, but you're doing this on your own. Throughout this teaching, this debate thing, I I want you guys to not be afraid to pursue the truth. A lot of us have an original belief, the way you were taught as you grew up. And we're going to challenge that a bit because we're going to study it. And if you go in already with your preconceived ideas, you're probably not going to be able to go very far. You know, like when you read the Bible, you try not to go in there already knowing this is what I believe and I'm not going to change it. When you read the Bible, we're surrendered to whatever, hey God, look. I want, I want to know whatever it is you want. You have to tell me. I'll, I'll, I'm trusting you. So you kind of have to just, I know I, I grew up with a lot of stuff, but I'm, I'm, whatever your word says, I'm going for. So let's study the Bible together. Uh, no matter how things, um, sorry, the one thing that I've come to understand, and that you guys are going to have to go through as we go, we're going to talk about the devil, we're going to talk about hell, not in this class, but over this year. We're going to talk about some crazy subjects. Um, I co- I've come to believe something that I'm, I'm very confident in, is that God is good. Through it all. He's good. He's perfect. I believe that. There's a lot of things I may not understand and I'm working on, but I know for a fact that I believe that He is good because of things I've seen in my own life and because of Jesus, most importantly, um, I believe that he's pure in all his ways, and he's and everything he does is perfect. That's what I believe that everything he does. So this whole issue with Satan, how he came to about, I believe that he's good, and and you know we're going to debate on that. But there's a verse: God's way is perfect. All the Lord's promises prove true. He's a shield to all who look to him for protection. I believe it. I believe that all his ways are perfect. So when you start getting shady, like whoa, why did he do that? Or you know, dig deeper. Try to understand. Don't just take it as whatever people say because whether you know it or not, this is this is pretty big. A lot of a- atheists use this. A lot of agnostics use this to a reason not to believe because that's an area where I don't understand. I don't see how God could do some of these things. So I don't want anything to do with them. Um, but if you and I can understand a little deeper um, to be able to explain to people, it would help a lot of people who are struggling with with trust in God. So today we're just going to go over a little bit of an intro on who the devil is. All right. Uh, what would you guys say so far, your knowledge of who the devil is, what would you say? Some of the things you, 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 know, you think you know about the devil. Josh in the back. Uh, he's a evil person, deceiving, liar, all the negative stuff. Neg- everything negative, that's him. All right. How about Elmer in the back? Come on, you don't know. One thing. Does he, do you know what color he is? Does he have horns? Does he have a tail? You don't know? Bro, look, if you're going to do a debate, you have to be able to throw yourself out there. Give us something, even if it's wrong. <coughs> all right, well, he's a little shy, but he's when he gets to debating, he's mad. He's mean, so be careful. It's, this is all front right here. <clears throat> All right, so anything else, Steve? Anything you know? Hey, don't cheat, bro. Anything you know about the devil right now? No. Nothing. He's a liar. Okay. Has he ever lied to you? No. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Anybody else? Monica, do you have any ideas about the devil? Yeah. Anything you've heard without looking at some of my notes? Um, he's just evil. He's evil? Yeah, I think that's most of us. There we go. He's a snake. Elmer said he's a snake. Serpent. That's good. Serpent? Serpent? Ooh. He's a what? Serpent of Genesis. Yeah, he just stole his answer. What's yours? Josh has one real quick. He's a musician, isn't he? He's a musician. Okay, have we go. Anything? He's a musician. That's new. Javier says it's new. Okay, Abigail doesn't know. Anybody else want to, anything they know about the devil? Javier, any experiences with him or anything? Well, he has a lot of names, but... He has a lot of names. Yeah. That's true. You know any others? 
Well, we'll learn some. It comes in different forms. Okay, shapeshifter, like a lizard. All right, anybody else? Julia, you got anything? Okay. Hey, well, that's cool, because you know what we're going to do over the next, up to the debate and a week, uh, so the idea is up to the debate we're going to learn about the devil and some of the things that are associated with our walk with Christ and Him, and then we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to clear up the debate after that. So he's got a couple names, there's a lot more, I just threw a couple out here, but here's, his, here's a definition that you guys should know. <laughs> The one who opposes the person and purpose of God. All right, someone who's in total opposition of what God is doing. Satan is especially associated with deceit, temptation, and testing through which he attempts to defeat believers from obeying God. All right, that's his purpose. That's all he does. Trying to take you down. Trying to take you down and trying to oppose God. Uh, that's his main goal. And so if you don't know anything about him, that's a pretty good start because you just want to know, you don't want to be friends with this guy, okay? Because uh, his whole goal is to kill you, pretty much. Uh, there's a verse that says, I came that you may have life and more abundantly, Jesus said, but he said that the thief comes to steal, to rob, to destroy. That's his purpose. All right, so if you don't know who the devil is, hope you get an idea today uh, who he is. He has some names. He was a serpent in Genesis. Didn't actually say Satan, just said a snake with legs. Satan right there. He was an adversary. Um, all throughout the Bible, you'll see him show up at different times, some of the things he does. He's an accuser. He accuses people before God, like one of us decides to go smoke a little weed uh, in the back, and then he'll, you know, Satan will use the opportunity to bring you, hey, God, do you see this? You really want to save him? You know, accuse you. Um, he, he'll get, you know, use people to tear you down. You know, his accuser, his also name is Satan, or the devil, angel of light, he's called. Uh, and a lot more. Beelzebub, Baliel, stuff like that. Um, those are those are the some of the names that are used. I have a phone call coming up just wait. And that, thank you. What does the Bible say about him? Alright, let's look at some scriptures. You may want to write some of these down for some of you who may be using it on your side of the topic. Um, but I, I'm gonna need some help reading. So actually if you can get your Bibles, if you have them, I'm gonna need some help reading these uh, verses. So let's just go. Let's just go down the line. Julia, if you can get the first one. Uh, Kim, if you can get that one there, John 12, and then uh, Marty, if you can get Ephesians 6. That's the second one. Abigail and Monica, if you could take these two here, Peter and Joe, uh, and then Javier, if you can take uh, Revelations 2. Steve, if you can get Genesis 3. Uh, who do we got? Uh, David, if you can get John 8, Elmer, 2 Corinthians 4. I have a Bible. Uh, Josh and Josiah, you can take these two back ones right here. So every, all of us will just go through it, just have them ready. We'll, we'll roll through. Got your back. If you need a Bible, we do have extras. Today's an intro on Satan. We're going to get deeper as we go. <clears throat> Alright, so Josiah and Josh, you guys have the last one here. And then uh, Kimberly and Julia, you have the first two up top. Steve, you have Genesis 3. And Javier has John. No, he doesn't. No, I have Revelation. Revelation, that's right. Okay, cool. All right, so once you guys are ready, let's read them. Uh, we'll start from the top down, and we'll just talk a little bit about who he is. Today we want to get an idea of who this guy is. Uh, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin, in which you once walked according to the, to the course of this world, according to the prince and the powers of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. 
Um, can you read the next one, Kim? Now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Okay, so Satan is the temporary ruler of this world. Um, Julia talked about... Uh, can you read it again, Julia? Sorry. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the powers of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. The prince of the power of the air. Okay. So Satan's a temporary ruler, so he has authority in this world. He has it, temporarily. He has authority. Kim read in John 12 how Satan will be cast out or something. Yeah, now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Okay. So at that, you know, there's a time coming where the ruler of this world will be cast out. But for now, he's in, he's, he's in charge of a lot of stuff here on earth. Um, so he's a temporary ruler. So the prince of the power of the air, the guy, in, you know, he's, he's working. Uh, don't think that this is like a foreign concept way in China. No, this is here. This is when you when you go to the liquor store. He's hey, he's got power everywhere. Um, so temporary ruler of this world. That's Satan. We're talking about the devil. Uh, if we can read number two, I believe Mighty Soul has that. Ephesians six. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. All right, so what do we, what is this telling, if you were trying to understand something about Satan, what are we learning here in that particular verse, something about him? You mind reading it again, Mike? Yeah. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So what is he not? Flesh. He's not flesh and blood. Okay. And what is he? If he isn't flesh and blood, what is he? Or what are the principality. spir spiritual hosts, principalities? Spiritual. It's an it's a it's an unseen. There's this unseen world that you know that's it's it's like around us, but we can't see it with our eyes. It's a spiritual world, all right. And that's what Ephesians six is saying is that you guys are in a fight, you're in a battle, but it's spiritual. It's not flesh and blood. So anytime you see somebody flesh and blood, that is not your enemy. There's something spiritual going on in that person or around that person. That's the enemy. And so the devil and his demons are spiritual. Uh, so that's something we need to get to know about him. Um, Abigail, in uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, or, or Job, whichever one you guys... 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about as a all right, so what's this verse telling us about the devil? Beware. Of what? He's always on the hunt. Yeah. He's hungry. Like a roaring lion. Maybe you think, nah, I don't, need to, I don't need to know about this guy. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, if you want, if the zoo let out all the lions, you would be concerned. Like, whoa. Uh, where's the zoo at? Is it close to my house? Are my kids outside? Um, so that's something to think about with the devil is that you should be concerned because he's out like a roaring lion ready to devour. It's not a little cat or a little Siamese cat, a little baby cat like Josiah's meow. No, big old lion with ah, teeth. All right, that's the devil. That's the image that Peter's portraying for us, is that, hey, watch out. Um, Job? Again, there is a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. All right, so Satan came before God. That's a touchy one there. That one you might guys might debate. But talking about Satan coming before God, and his purpose was to bring up Job. Or no, actually, actually, no. That's not why he came. God brought it up. But the whole, just the story of Job in itself is that he was the enemy to Job. You know, he wanted the opportunity 
to tear Job down. Um, so that's, that's a little bit of who Satan is. He's an enemy to believers. He's your enemy. So don't be his friend. I know it's tempting. You know, a lot of things come up. He calls you. Julia, are you busy? You want to come to the club? No, nah, bro. I don't hang out with lions. No, nah, kidding. But, you know, I don't. he's not going to call you. But he uses different things. We're going to talk about that. Coachella. Coachella. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, I believe is... Javier, Revelations. Revelations. Uh, do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and for ten days you will have tribulation. <coughs> be faithful to death. I will give you the crown of life. All right. So, what is Satan doing in this verse? What was he doing? In what you just read. Oh, he's going to test us. As in, shoot. What was he doing in that verse? It was uh, throwing people in prison. Yeah. All right. Yeah, making them suffer. Yeah. He said you're, he's going to make you suffer. He's going to throw you in jail, and he's going to tempt you. That's what he does, and and sometimes God allows it. I don't know. We I don't know why, but that's his. That's what he does. So if, you know, if you're wondering why you're in a certain position, sometimes. Satan causes the people of God to suffer. That's his job. You know, he, he loves his job. Now, where he got his job from is what you guys are going to debate. But that's what he, that's what he does. Causes people to suffer. Um, uh, there was a story in the Bible where it talks about this woman who was sick. or I, I can't remember if the woman who was sick or the woman who was like bent over, had some back problems. I, you know what, I can't quite remember, but he said, you know, Satan held this person bound for like 18 years, and I'm here to set you free, girl. Jesus was telling her. And uh, that's, you know, that's that's what he does. He makes you suffer. Uh, and I don't know if anyone here has suffered because of him. I think just about everybody has. In one way or another, families who say, you know, drugs and just wrecked us, wrecked families and stuff. But uh, that's his purpose. That's That's him. So if you're wondering, um, next person, Steve, chapter 3, 1 through 5. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Should God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, You may eat of the fruit of the tree, and the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. That's perfect. That's probably enough right there, Steve. Thank you. That's good. Um, so, why do you think Satan, I don't, I don't, you know what, I didn't even catch if we talked about that. If Satan was actually, but why do you think Satan even brought that up to Eve? Like, why don't you try the apple, or not the apple, but the fruit? Why do you think he even did that in the first place? To tempt. Tempt. Any thoughts, Steve? Okay. Test him. You probably saw her looking at it, and then saw that that was a meat. Yeah, hey, that I think so. Satan tempts people and deceives people using human weakness. So wherever your weakness is, that's what he's going to use. So if you're wondering, you know, like the stories of Troy where Achilles, his one spot, his little ankle, was his weak spot. And that's exactly where he's going to try to take you down. So for some of us who, who have just given our lives to Christ, uh, you know, we, we have a weakness or multiple weaknesses. Those are, he's going to be attacking you there. And always, you know, even when we play volleyball, we just look for, okay, who's terrible? Let's just send the ball to that person over there. So, it, you know, that's, he's got tactics. He goes for your weakness. Eve, she liked fruit, pomegranates. I don't know what the fruit was. Or maybe, you know, that maybe just that she was curious and what was beyond. He's a liar and he's a father of lies. So, anybody else here a liar? 
Yeah. Yeah, just about everybody. All right, so hopefully not on a constant basis. I know it might slip here and there. It is evil. But he's the, he, if anyone's a liar, it's him. So like he told Eve, hey, look, take a bite. You're not going to die, girl. Are you kidding me? Look at that juicy apple. There ain't none like it in the garden. Oh, really? Bite it. Uh, you know, not, she didn't die, but her eyes are open. She felt shame. Sin came in, and now you got to die. You know, however, 100 years later, um, and that's, uh, that's what we're all dealing with now. Satan lied to her, lies to us. Um, Elmer? Um, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. All right, so what, is, what do we know about Satan from this verse, Elmer? What is something he does? Blinded the minds of the unbelievers. Blinds the minds of unbelievers. Who are unbelievers? What's an unbeliever? The world. The people. Someone who doesn't believe in, in Jesus and what he did in God. Um, it says, this is what the verse is saying, is that Satan blinds people. Um, there's just, there's a... Um, story with Paul, when Paul first got, saw the light uh, shown around him when he was on the horse and the, you know, or walking and the light shone and he was blinded. And then when he got saved, um, or I can't remember, saved or baptized, when, as soon as he, I think it was when he got baptized, it said the scales like fell off of his eyes and he could see. Not that you know, he was blinded by Satan, but that's kind of what it is with unbelievers there's people around us we know who don't believe and like why you know what what is wrong here there's a blindness that you know it's like it's saying satan blinds unbelievers somehow it just blocks their ability to see to understand to comprehend what god has done who he is how good he is you just can't see it um and it's sad but I, you know but i but the gospel has the power to break through that not, not, nothing you and I could do, but Jesus does. And we're going to look at this last two. Uh, Satan is a defeated enemy. So if some of you are freaked out right now, oh no, the lions are out of the cage and uh, the zoo, somebody broke it. Or, you know, I, I don't know where I'm going to go. The devil's going to blind me. Uh, check this out. Revelations 20.10 and Luke 10, 17 and 19. Go ahead, guys. Uh, and the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire. And so for were the beasts and the false prophets were and they were and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever all right so what do we know about the devil from here this verse Cast into hell. yeah we already know what's gonna happen he's gonna die all right we already know they're gonna catch that lion and they're gonna burn him or you know they're gonna he's gonna get punished that's the idea we already know your end you're not gonna win and that's the idea with the devil. We already know you're not going to win. You're going to you're going to get defeated. You already are. It's already settled. Just a matter of time. And then Josh, if you can read the last one. Uh, 70, 72 returned with joy and said, "Lord, even the demons submitted to us in your name." He replied, "I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy." Nothing will harm you. All right. So, Jesus giving his, telling the disciples, go out. And he's saying, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And I've given you authority over him, over demons, over everything. You have authority over this spiritual realm that you cannot see by trusting in my name, Jesus says. By trusting in his name. And I think that gives us some hope. Not only is he defeated... But Jesus has given us, given his disciples, power over him. Uh, and, you know, that may not sound like something you have the ability to do right now. You know, oh, I don't go to the gym. I ain't that strong. No, no. It's not flesh and blood we're dealing with. This is spiritual. And in, in Christ, you have authority, you have victory over what he's doing. Uh, we're going to learn more about that, too, over the weeks to come. But there's just one thing I want to conclude with. Uh, in conclusion, you know, this, uh, I was starting to study this. I was a little scared. I was like, ooh, the devil, you know, 
just get me all scared at night with my covers, you know. <laughs> nah, I wasn't that bad, but you know, after you see a scary movie, you're like freaked. Uh, you know, not any of you guys. Julia doesn't do that anymore. You watch scary movies? She loves scary movies. Chucky's Bride, Chucky, everything Chucky. Just has a Chucky doll. Nah, she doesn't anymore. But, um, you know, you get scared of, of some of these things. You watch, anybody like the Exorcist movies or watch them? Josh? Nobody else? Javier does? You, Monica, you ever seen the Exorcist? Yeah? You like them? You okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Cool. Uh, so, you know, you usually get a little scared. You're watching this evil stuff, you know, it's possessed people. Oh, man, I want that to happen to me. But um, this verse gives me comfort uh, when thinking about this great evil. Uh, let's just take a look at it. It's, it's in Romans 37 to 39. It says, Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So that gives me hope because it says there's not a thing on the face of the earth or heavens that could ever separate you from God's love. Nothing. No demon, no power, no height, no depth, no not even hell. Nothing can separate you from God's love. So, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're in a room and Satan was the only other person there, hey, bro, God loves me, all right? And he is right here. So try it, you know, it's something, you know, you have to, you have to have some confidence in who, or you have to have confidence in how God, how much God loves you because you got to know he's the bigger, he's the bigger guy. You know, we're going to, as we look through this, Satan has power, but God is the ultimate. Anything Satan has is because God has allowed it. Um, so we don't need to be afraid. We got to know that God's love for us is unstoppable. No, no demon. If this room was full of demons, what? Try it. You know that that God, God is He. He's got your back. You know He's got mine. Uh, but but at the same time, you want to be careful because the devil can wreck your life. The devil can do some major damage. The devil does have influence over some stuff in your life. He can he can you know if you choose to. Allow that tiger into your house for a bit, he'll tear it up. So that's the that's something you're gonna have to be careful with. So that's a little intro today of the devil, who he is, some of the things he does, he's your enemy. The real question as as we're getting to is where did he come from? Where did he come from? But the thing you have to know today is maybe you don't understand, but you can know you don't have to be afraid of him. Because if you're in God, God has covered you in His love. And he will not let anything happen to you. It's kind of like one of us, Javier, for instance. He has a fiancé, soon to be wife. He tells her on the wedding day, Girl, ain't nobody going to touch you. I am going to protect you myself. If I have to die to protect you, I'll do it. You know, that commitment. Jesus made that commitment to us. He actually did die. So that we can have that protection, so that we can have a secured eternity, that we can be confident in His love, and that's that's what it is. Jesus had a marriage ceremony. He says, "I love you," and I'm going to prove it right now on this cross. And that's how we can trust that there's no power, nothing that can get in between this, because He's lo He loves us. So uh, just hope you have some comfort. In that, knowing that, as we study this, don't get freaked. Just try not to go to any crazy Satanist sites and stay too long, okay? You don't want to just start watching too many videos. Unless you want to. I mean, nah, don't do it. But let's, hey, look, let's, we're going to pursue the truth. Where did he come from? Let's just start studying. Start this week, because if we need to, we might have to do it in two weeks. We'll see. So we'll just start going. Next week, we'll have another class, going to get a little deeper. And every week, so it's just start now. I'd suggest you meet with your teams and start going over this. Don't wait till the last day. Um, so let's just pray, just as you are. Let's let's say a prayer.